Hello. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Okay, hey. so we are recording. I'm ready to get started. Um, thank you so much, ladies, for showing up for the disability clinic. Um, I had taken a poll in the group a few weeks ago, and this was the number one thing everyone wanted help with. So I figured, let me give it to you. So let's talk about visibility. Um, this will be in a hot seat coaching style. Um, you can come to me with your coaching request, ask your question, and then I will help you as best as I can. So um, visibility, why is it important? Well, it's the way we get clients. There's no way getting around it, right? If you're a business owner, you have to get visible in front of the people that need you, that um, want the help that you're offering, but sometimes they don't even know they want it. They just know they have this problem. So how as coaches, consultants, do we get in front of the people that we want to get in front of? There's many different ways. There's organic methods, there's paid advertising methods. Um, it all depends on what you want. So I will now turn the questions over to you all and I'm excited to help you. So um, who has a coaching request? Well, I'll jump in if nobody else is going to. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know me, I'm always full of questions. Okay, so um, you you posted this and that that's great. I'm really excited about it, but I have serious blocks around creating content. That's why my first live was asking for people to tell me what they want to know about mm -hmm. because I sat down and I'm just like, ah! Okay. <laughs> Okay. You know, how do you, how do you come up with that content? Because I'm still at the stage where, you know, if I'm working with someone one-on-one -on -one and they have questions, I feel like I have answers, mm -hmm. but to be that expert who just volunteers content that's highly valuable, I don't feel like I'm there yet. Okay. Um, I always want to go back to, there's a few things. Um, you're, are you clear on the problem you solve? I think so. I'll have, if you're going to ask me, I'm going to have to find it in my workbook materials from the weekend, but I am, I think I'm pretty clear on it. You need to get clearer because you shouldn't have to look at your notes to know what problem you solve. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's overcoming fear. It's overcoming fear, but to say it eloquently, Okay. I help women overcome the fear of chasing their dreams so they can quit watching life pass them by and start confidently living with purpose. Excellent. Okay. So, I just don't have it memorized. <laughs> it, you know, it has to be natural, you know. Um, the, the better that you start owning that you're the expert that solves this problem, the easier content creation will be for you. Yeah. So, two things um natalie is a private client so she has she's had homework over the last several weeks so i have two questions do you have your mind map and two do you have your pillars well yes i think i have my mind map and my pillars um were i was kind of there were a couple that I had questions on on the homework but my pillars were um creating vision and purpose, fearless mindset, mm -hmm. and then strategic action. Okay, excellent. So now that should be on your mind map as like bigger circles coming out of the middle. Okay. Right? Okay. And, then, and then you can now break down those bigger circles like strategy, right? Mm -hmm. You can break that down into smaller pieces, and that's your content. Okay, okay. Because really with, with coaching, the money really is, is in our one-on-one -on -one time, our group coaching time, and holding people accountable to transform. Mm-hmm. You can never give away enough content. I can tell you exactly how to do a webinar, and I have. I've given away opt-ins on how to do a webinar, how to do Facebook ads. I've done live trainings in my Facebook group on how to set up a Facebook ad with Phil. 
my ads manager. Do you think people actually took the information and ran with it? Most likely not. You know, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where the coaching, the accountability, having skin in the game, paying thousands of dollars to work with someone comes into play because it forces you to transform. So never get afraid that you're going to give it all away because you can't. Mm -hmm. You know, um, very rarely do people actually implement without being held highly accountable because it is very difficult to change. Like Sue and, and Natalie, would you be doing lives today if, if you guys didn't have skin in the game? <laughs> Probably a million years. You wouldn't. No, not at all. Right. That's I would have I... never, never done it in my whole life. <laughs> but, you know, you're doing it now. And, um, and I'm sure it's not the first time you ever heard that advice. True, right? I read that all the time. Exactly. Everything I read says you should go live, but I felt like Zenny today when I saw that post. <laughs> you, know. you know why. I know, like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Zenny, I've, I've forced her to get out of her comfort zone for quite some time, but she thanks me for it later, so you can hate me. It's all good. You can hate oh, me. I really don't. I really don't, and I know what you're doing is good for me, but you know... It's like when you're a kid and your mom makes you go to bed early and you just get mad at her, you know, <laughs> but, but it's all for, it's all for the best. Yes. Yes. Um, and you're going to see that at the end of the seven days, you're going to be a different person, you know, in terms of business wise, um, you're going to engage with your people. You're going to get feedback. Um, and if you, if, if you have a video that's doing really, really well, then maybe we can consider um, boosting it and I can show you ladies how to do that um, just to get some more traffic. Sue, you are awesome. You already pitched on your first video. I was so proud of you. I was like, she's not <laughs> playing games. Well, I got to get three times in, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, um, just so if anyone's wondering, for my private clients, I'm doing a challenge um, this week where they get an amazing cash prize as well as more one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And so Sue and Natalie are at it fiercely. <laughs> um, so just in case you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about this challenge I'm, I'm, I'm having for them. How do you guys like the, like the prize? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. I I get I get motivated by prizes too. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um so Natalie, um I want you to rethink your mind map, right? Since you have more clarity now from when you yes. did it two weeks ago. Redo the mind map. Okay. Get your pillars on there. And it you should have more than three pillars, but maybe that's all you have. I don't know look at the pillars that, that you've created, break down those pillars into smaller micro chunks, right? And then that's your content, you know? And then when it comes to creating content, I always recommend give less. When you think you've given too much or you think that you've given not enough, you're probably about right. Okay. People cannot digest large chunks of information. I'm one of the unique people that I can sit at a professor's feet and listen for 10 hours straight and love it. But mm -hmm. I am the minority of people who can absorb tons of information in one sitting. Most people chunks. That's why actually for Facebook lives and even um, YouTube videos, I think there's like a huge drop off after like two minutes. I, I would agree with that because you know, like if I go to a conference or something, I can sit there all day and listen and absorb. But when I'm, when I'm doing the YouTube or the, the Facebook lives, oh my gosh, shoot me in the foot. People just ramble forever. And I'm like, say what you're going to say and let's move on. I don't have all afternoon to sit here. Right. You know? So yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And a lot of times if it's more than like five or 10 minutes, I just won't even, I won't even watch it. Right. Right. Yeah. I get, I get frustrated too. Like if it's someone that 
I'm, I'm following or I'm supporting as a client and I'm just like, can you get to the point? Can you get to the point? You know? Um, yeah. But you ladies did wonderful today. You guys, I probably because you're, you're nervous. You guys went <laughs> straight to the point, which was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so yes. And once you have your micro buckets, let's call them buckets, your micro buckets, um, if you can break those micro buckets down even more into like point one, two, three, four, you know, um, like for example, you have the strategy, a micro bucket of the strategy could be time management, right? Ah, okay. And then the time management can be broken down to, you know, work, exercise, faith, me time, kids time, and then household responsibilities. Oh, yeah, and I talk about I'm making this stuff up, Natalie. <laughs> you know, that's really good because not, I mean, I look at strategy and and I can come up with like one or two things that would go under strategy, but the, the depth to which you're taking it, like I've, I've never seen it. Like now that you're walking me through it once I can emulate that and, and reproduce it with the other branches, but I kind of have to see it once first. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, you know, let's say you take household responsibilities. You can break that down into, you know, meal preparation which includes food shopping and whatever and then there's household cleaning and chores and then there's bills and you see how you're like making it tighter and tighter and tighter and then you can just do a live on how to you know not let your mail overwhelm you because that's part of the household chores and like I, I hate going through mail. That I was going. I, through say, I guarantee money. you, I will not be doing one on that because <laughs> I hate it too. Hate it, and so. But like one of my things that I do now is like I just pile it and I go through it once a week, you know. Um, and then I dump it. Like I, I, because what I used to do is like, oh, I'll go through it later. I'll go through it later, and the next thing you know, it's like a mess, you know. Uh -huh. so I force myself to go through it. Um, but I sit it on my work desk and it clutters my brain to know that it's there, which affects my work. Yeah. So it's very important for me to get rid of that clutter and, and, and then I could have some more brain space. So, um, so that's an example. Um, what was the other, um, so again, with strategy, another, another facet of strategy could be you know, desire mapping, like figuring out what is it that you really want and then creating a strategy to get it. So, you know, one of those things could be, um, journaling on your true heart's desires, like really get honest with yourself. Then the other thing could be, what's your timeline? What, what's going to be your action plan to do this? What pieces do you need in place to make your desires a reality? Like, one of, one of the reasons behind me, you know, wanting a very successful business, um, besides giving back to charity and providing for my family is I want to be able to go on a year long trip through Europe and just cook with famous chefs and like eat my way through Europe. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Yeah. I, I love that. I love to cook and I love foods from all over the world. And it's one of my goals. And I also want to go to Le Cordon Bleu, which is 50 grand a year for two years and just do it for fun. I don't plan on becoming a chef. I don't want to open a restaurant. I just want to do it for fun. Uh -huh. you know? So to drop a hundred grand just for fun, I need to, you know, have it. So, um, if that's one of my heart's desires, you know, starting my business and, and being successful, investing in myself, investing in mentors, investing in advertising, growing my tribe, it's all part of my strategy to get one of those desires a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see, like, um, I mean, you can go, you, you can go in so many different directions with just that one pillar. Sure. Sure. Okay. 
Okay. And that's a fun topic to talk about what people really want, you know, really being honest, because a lot of people don't even know what they want out of life. They're just such on, they're on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very privileged in the personal development business, you know, that we are so, so aware of what we want, what we need and what we desire. So, um, yeah. And then, okay. and then what you did today was really smart, polling your audience, figuring what is it that they really want. Um, you know, a fan of that. You already have interview um, responses and information. So go back and look at that to see what was like, was there a recurring theme? Was there something that people were always like revolving around a specific topic and, and take it from there. Okay. And then once you get rolling, the content will kind of create itself. People are going to just ask you questions naturally. And you're going to realize I'm always asked about this. I'm always asked about that, you know, uh -huh. and then that's how your business takes a life of its own. Okay. Okay. So are you clear on the, on the content you're going to create for the rest of the week? I'm getting there. Okay. No. No, I like literally I threw out that first one and then I started writing down a couple ideas because I'm like, there's only what, 24 people in my group. The odds that I'm going to get enough content for the rest of the week is probably not likely. So I started brainstorming myself. So I got a couple ideas. Well, I want you to share that video on your business page. Also test going live on your business page as well. I've done going, I've done lives on my business page. I just started the group like two weeks ago. So, and I shared the live on my business page. I could not get this live shared to your ambitious coaches um, page. Check your, could, check your settings, your privacy settings. Okay. I may need to, because I think I have that set as a, Oh, is your, you did it on your group? Is your group, I did it in the group. Is your group closed or public? Right now, I think it's public. I just checked that this morning and I'm pretty sure my group is public. Okay. Uh -uh. I thought this all through before I did it, but um, let me check real quick. Group settings. Yeah, it's public. Okay, so check your settings. Okay, it's public. I'm gonna, I'm moving y'all. I'm moving to my room. Because I hear the baby's awake. My dad just walked in the house. So let me move out of the living room. I won't be able to watch the rainfall. <laughs> Let me move into my room. So yeah, check your settings um, because that is probably why you can't share it. Okay, it, it was set on public. Okay. So I'm not sure, I did share it to my business page, so I'll see if I can share it from my business page to yours. Okay. But if I can't, I did tag, I used the hashtag that you wanted, so maybe you can pick it up that way. Yeah, oh, I, I already saw it. I already saw it. So, you know, I got you down. But the thing is, is that I want you to get as much publicity as possible. You know, uh -huh. so I want you, I, that's part of the reason why I want you to share it to my group is because I want, I want you to get in front of more people. Okay. You know, well, and, if there, and if there's other groups with your ideal clients, I'd love for you to be able to. I did go through my groups and figure out which ones I could post lives in and figure out which days I could post what, where. So I, I have kind of mapped that out a little bit, but I can't, I can't share it from my business page either. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to waste time on that. Um, I will. Let's figure that out. So just personal message me. Let's okay. That's fine. 
Okay, who has the next coaching request about visibility? Nobody, Mary, Sue. Hello. Hi. Hi, I actually do, but I'm at the, um, I'm doing a physical therapy thing. So um, I probably can't interact much. Um, if somebody else has another question, I could probably join in after. Okay, or you can just ask your question and then, and then I can just answer it. And then you could give me feedback when you're, when you're able okay. to talk. I, I tried to see if there was a texting mode. I didn't see that, but like there to must be a it. chat. But there is a chat actually. Okay. Um, well, okay, I'll look at that when I'm done. But basically what I want is, <clears throat> excuse me, I am, um, I'm kind of in transition between my job and, and doing this full time. Mm -hmm. And um, my thing is I have a lot of people responding, and, but I don't have a lot of um, income flow. Mm -hmm. to um to make that transition yet okay and um that's where my biggest struggle is is, is really people are like yeah yeah this is great this is helpful this is like they are agreeing with it but they're not dishing out the money to you know uh want to go further okay what's the problem you solve um, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a, I mean, I have different courses. I have uh, learning to hear, um, uh, hear God's voice. It's a, it's an online course. Um, I also have a, um, uh, embrace your God given voice, overcoming fear. Um, and, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with that. And then, um, I also, I do some, um, personal dream interpretations online. And I know we talked about that. You said spiritual stuff doesn't sell well. Um, so that's what I have to offer right now. Okay. I would encourage you to find a problem within your zone of genius that is urgent and needs to be solved now. Okay. Um, when you find that, you'll have an easier time selling. You know, um, for example, you know, as a business coach, if I just said, oh, yeah, I'm a business coach, you know, I help people start businesses, that's not even very enticing. But if I say I help people launch their businesses in under six months so that they can have 10K months, that's much different. You hear the problem that I'm solving. I'm helping people launch their coaching business and hit 10K a month. Um, if you're a life coach, um, helping people save marriages. That's an urgent problem that needs to be solved right now, right? You need to save that marriage now. You can't wait six months. If you're a health coach helping people get healthy and add 30 years to their life, that's an urgent problem that needs to be solved now. They can't wait to solve that. Um, if you're depressed because your life lacks purpose and you're a purpose life coach, helping people find their purpose so that they can get over their fatigue of life and depression, um, and live on purpose. Um, that's an urgent problem that needs to be solved now. So, um, figure out what problem you solve that's urgent and will, that's how you get people to pay you is, is by creating language around the problem you solve that increases urgency. So um, you, you mentioned a little bit about mindset. That's an urgent one. Um, if you're helping, you know, entrepreneurs or executives overcome their fear of standing out and being visible um, so that they can, you know, either move up the corporate ladder or launch their business and, and not be afraid to launch their business. That's an urgent problem, right? If you need to make money and you your mindset is working against you. Um, so I definitely think there's a little bit of work to be done around that. It's the urgency piece that you're missing. That's why people aren't paying because not only urgent, but the problem has to be big enough. You know, um, 
helping someone save their marriage, that's priceless. Helping someone build a business, it's priceless. Helping someone get control of their life if they're out of control, that's priceless. Helping someone find their purpose when they're just on autopilot, those things are priceless. And if you can show that to people, then you could command premium prices and you'll be able to sell your offer. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so um, awesome, awesome. She wrote, yes, I did. Great, great. Um, any other questions? Next coaching request. Hi, Sheila. Welcome, thanks for coming. Sue, do you have a question? Do you wanna talk about your, your Facebook Live challenge? Well, you know, you mentioned that most people drop off after two minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is it best to keep them in that two minute range or is like 10 minutes or less okay? Yeah, 10 minutes and less is okay. Because some, some of them won't be able to only be a minute long, you know. Right. Right. I also, I've done lives for half an hour. I've done lives for over an hour because right. the engagement was there. People were asking questions. So it really depends on your audience. Yeah. You know, um, I say for now, keep it under 10 minutes. Um, and, and then as, as the audience gets more involved and, and you start getting more engagement, then you can gauge it from there. Right. And does it seem to make a difference time of day? It does. Um, I, I don't know too much about that, um, but you can test it out. Okay. Like I know for webinars, like for example, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays are the best days. And it's usually from 12 to 2 p.m. are the best times to do a webinar. Um, with Facebook Lives, I'm sure it does. I just don't know the stats on that. Okay. And by the way, regarding visibility, um, August and September are the best months for webinars. Don't ask me why. That's just what the statistics show. And I'm so excited um, for anyone that's going to be getting their webinar out in, in the next month or so because this is the time to do it. And if you notice your ads, on your feed, more and more people are advertising right now too. I think it's just like leading up to like Q3 and four of the year where people are like getting excited about changing their lives because the new year is coming, holidays are coming, but August and September are like the hot months to do webinars. And if you don't know already, you know that's my favorite form of visibility because it establishes you, establishes you as an authority and it books discovery calls like hotcakes. And it's the best way to build a coaching business without killing yourself. <laughs> so, any other questions? Well, Facebook Lives, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always do Tuesdays at two. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it, one of the things that I, I attended a, um, a training a while back on events and promoting events, and they always suggested that, you know, when you're getting ready to do your event, you do a quick Facebook Live saying, here I am, I set up my table, this is that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is that same thing good for visibility? Um, say, if we... Um, like for my Tuesdays at two, you mm -hmm. know, as far as like the day that maybe you want to talk about that particular tool. Yeah, you know, like sure. And that I probably would do on your personal page, right? Because those are people in your circle that go to that. Right. In your area. Yeah, do it. Okay. Get them excited, you know, share with them, you know, what you're going to be doing. Exactly everything that you just said, you should definitely do. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I'll be able to remember that, but it's recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and um, 
people love the process. And I know that we like to show up all done up or um, very organized and very like put together. People actually love the messiness of the process. So like showing them, oh, this is my table getting ready. I'm a little nervous or I'm getting really excited to present to the two. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. You should join us. People love to see like that back story. Like remember a few weeks ago, I shared the backstory of me doing my video, shooting my video. People right. loved it. And it was so messy and like not polished at all. But people relate to realness. They want to know that you're a real person. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. And, you know, as a business coach, um, I personally believe that you should do what's real for you. You know, like some people are like, I would never let my kid be in like the room with me when I'm doing a live or I never want to see this or this. I want to be this polished and this, you know, and that's them, you know, that they'll attract a certain type of person. They're going they're They're a certain type of way. And that's them for me. Obviously y'all know that's not my story. My kids, always barge in on me no matter what my dad barges in on me like it's just the way my life is right now and that's my story um so own it own it don't try to hide away from it like if, if, if I worried about that I would never go live you guys would never see me anywhere I'd be like hiding in a corner somewhere well I agree because I mean I did a two-minute video of dust so <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I love I it. <laughs> you know, it is, it is, it is what it is, and people like to see real. People like to feel like they're doing business with someone who's real, someone who, at the same time, though, show your authority. You know, mm -hmm. always bring it back to that problem you're solving and how you're transforming lives and why it's priceless, and you know how you actually help people always you always want to bring it back to that so like how do i bring my messy story back to that well i started a business that lets me have the life that i want that lets my kids be around that lets me work from any room in my house or outside or a cafe i have that freedom to do as i please you know and and i, I attract people that want that freedom also so I, you can always tie it back to, you know, how you, how you help people. Right. Yeah. You know, for the first two years of my business, I did no advertising. My visibility strategy was crazy. I don't recommend it, but it was basically posting in Facebook groups and um, creating tons of content. Yes, Mary, there will be a replay. I will upload it shortly. Um, I was creating tons of content all the time. Facebook Live wasn't invented yet because it just launched, I think a year ago. I think Facebook Live launched a year ago and I didn't even have access to it because I was living in Honduras. So I didn't get access to it till I moved to the States. Um, and I was using Periscope. I was creating opt-ins, like an opt-in a month. I was posting all over different Facebook groups. I pretty much burnt myself out and I never knew where my next client was coming from. That is not a sustainable way to build a business because you don't know who's interested. Even if, I mean, there's a hundred entrepreneur groups. I mean, thousands of entrepreneur groups. So I knew that I was in front of the right people but you just never knew, you know, when a message would resonate with someone who is actually looking for coaching. Do they actually need help? Um, do they desire help? I mean, it was just, am I answering the right questions? Right. Because you never knew if the opt-in would resonate or if your post would resonate. Um, and it's not really a good way to build authority because everyone's posting. You're just like everyone else posting. So um, it works, 
but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of hustle. Um, I didn't know where my next client was coming from. I knew that they would come eventually because my content was good, but it just wasn't healthy, especially second baby was coming or maybe not yet, but I had the first baby and, um, it was very overwhelming, which is how I got into webinars and then automating webinars because it automatically sets you up as an authority because you were able to put on a presentation for about an hour, providing value, telling them about yourself, sharing about yourself. And then you invite them to a strategy call or a discovery call, whatever you want to call it. At the end, people that really need your help will sign up to speak to you. You know, it's like the, it's, it's, it's like they see an ad, they sign up to watch the webinar because they're in pain. They're suffering with whatever your webinar is about. And then they have an opportunity to get on the phone with you or your team. Cause eventually you'll have a sales team, an enrollment team, um, to see how you can serve them. And you literally can go, you can book clients within 24 hours of like launching a webinar. You can be booking clients into your programs the most efficient way. So, um, now Facebook live is, is, has been out. It's very successful. You can run ads to your lives. And if you're pitching at the end of your lives, a strategy call or, um, a discovery call with you, it's equivalent to a webinar. You know, so that's why I'm encouraging you ladies to do Facebook lives, because if I want you to get good at owning your expertise, I want you to get good at speaking about your expertise and owning that authority that you have as the expert in your niche. And I want you to start getting visible in front of people who need it. So that's the purpose of the Facebook live challenge that I'm having you do. And if you're not a client of mine, and you don't know about the Facebook challenge, I challenge you to, you know, go live every day on your business page, in your group, um, on your personal profile, if you're comfortable with that and start sharing, start sharing how you're meant to serve people. You know, that's the best form of visibility is video or webinars. Um, and then don't forget to pitch. Don't forget to pitch a call. You have to invite people. Um, you have to, you have to prime your audience to, to engage with you, whether it's jump on a call, sign up, give you a one in the comments. If they agree with you, um, give you a two in the comments. If they don't agree with you, you know, like different engagement techniques that you can use on Facebook live. Um, so that you prime your people, to engage and to really develop that relationship with you. It has to be a give and take. So, Angelica? Yes? Um, I have a question about um, like post management. There are, I see a lot of people doing it and I, I kind of like the idea of having just maybe one or two reoccurring posts that happen every week on the same day mm -hmm. um but is there how do i is there a way to do that without having to purchase yet another add-on system to manage it and um yeah because i don't want to have to remember to go in and do it every single time and buffer. change it every single time buffer is free buffer is free okay Mm -hmm. Buffer is free for X amount of accounts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so we had talked about creating that email series, mm -hmm. which I did leading to, um, like a, a group session. Um, so that, that email series is going out this week. Mm hmm the group is scheduled to start next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Do I, and if I do, what do I post on my actual business page? 
because the same people who are getting, you know, my, my following is not large enough that I have a huge diverse population of people who are getting emails versus those that are subscribing to my business page. There's a lot of overlap there. So do I post that offer on my business page or do I just let it all come through the emails that are going out? Do both. Go ahead and do both. Do both because the percentage of people, you know, like what is it? I don't know what your open rates are on your emails, but it's probably under 20%. Okay. You know, um, so only 20% of the people will actually open your emails and read it. So hopefully if you also post in your Facebook group, as well as your business page, you can grab another percentage of those people, um, to see your content and to get invited to that group. Okay. Redundancy is excellent. Like never worry about that. <laughs> okay. Cause that's one thing that I worry about. It's being annoying. Like, no. like, some of the people that I know that are in this, I'm like, oh, you poor soul, you're getting three things from me on the same day at the same time about the same thing. And honestly, a percentage of the people that are in my group are people that I know and like, they're not going to purchase a program from me, period. You know, they're just in there to be nice and be supportive and that kind of stuff. So I don't want to drive people nuts. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that, you know. Okay. Yeah. And if you get a hater, it just means you've arrived. So don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well, shoot, then I did that with my first Twitter post. <laughs> I had to call in backup on it because it was, um, it was an atheist that was definitely trying to provoke a conversation. And I was like, well, do I answer them and really try and be open and honest? And they're like, no, it's a trap. Just let it go. Just don't even respond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you ever, if you ever watch anyone launch, right? Like launching your, like, um, Denise Duffield Thomas is about to launch her, um, lucky B money Boot Camp, and she's everywhere. Uh huh. She's everywhere. And she has like so many affiliates that are doing webinars for her to sell her stuff. She's selling her own stuff. She's doing her own webinars. Um, I'm getting like five different emails from people about the program. Like when you're launching, you just ca can't care about people's feelings. Like you have to do what you have to do to run your business. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way you get clients is by getting in front of them with a re relevant message as often as possible until they purchase. Okay. And if your message is resonating with them and they need your help, they're going to pay for it at some point. Mm -hmm. And your job as a business owner and the marketer of your business is to make it irresistible, show them why they need it and be there to give them an opportunity to purchase. Okay. So do I, do I then just start posting that at the end of this week or do I start posting stuff about it now? Start now. Why not? Start now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Remember it takes seven to 12 touches before a sale. Mm -hmm. so they have only heard about the program once you have 11 more times to go before they actually might purchase. Okay. Okay. I may, and that may be where I focus some of my, my content this week also sure. is, is around that. Okay. Yep. Very good. Excellent. And don't forget to pitch. I've got it scheduled. I know what days I'm pitching on. I just got to develop the content around it backwards. I'm kind of reverse engineering this whole thing. That's good. That's the way to do it. You know, reverse engineer. You know, make sure that your content goes over objections, just like a good email series. You want to bring up the urgency. Why, you know, why they need to work with you. You want to overcome objections. Talk about the objections in your content. Like as a business coach, I talk about why you can't afford not to work with me. 
how many more months can you go without knowing what the heck you're doing in your business, never knowing where the clients are going to come from, not knowing when you'll actually make any money, you have no strategy, and you're just completely lost. So trying mm -hmm. to save money and trying to like do it yourself, you're really hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. So... The money objection is a big one that I that I get a lot, so I always address that in some shape, way, or form. Okay. About how they can't afford not to fix it. So for you, um, helping people to get that strategy to find their life purpose and pursue it, how could they afford not to, you know, join your program so that they learn how to really even figure out what is it that they really want so that they can, they can stop living in despair every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I, like about six years ago, I, w I had chronic fatigue, chronic, chronic fatigue. That's how I ended up a vegan because someone had a blog post and a webinar about um fatigue i had no idea the answer was being a vegan i just knew i was tired all the time uh -huh. you know and i was like searching like okay i there's nothing wrong with me i'm not sick i went to the doctor all of my test results are great there's nothing wrong with me but i go to sleep i wake up tired i have no energy for my life and i was an executive at that point doing marketing and I needed to be focused. I needed, you know, I was managing millions of dollars in ad spend every month. Like I couldn't afford to be tired all the time. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to hang out with my friends. I didn't like, I was just literally surviving because I was so tired and no amount of sleep was making it go away. I tried mm -hmm. going away, you know, taking a vacation, sleeping it off. Nope. And that, and I ended up, reading about fatigue on this health blog, which took me to a webinar. And then I ended up hiring the person in a group coaching program on how to become a vegan. And I felt amazing after like the first few weeks. It was hard, but I wasn't tired anymore. Mm -hmm. So had she not spoken about what my problem was, which was fatigue, I would have never found her. If she was only talking about being a vegan and why eating vegetables is good for you, I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for a solution to my problem of being tired. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. No, I said, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I hope that helps you like understand a little bit better you know, uh -huh. um, you know, it's really understanding, you know, the people that you're meant to serve, really understanding what is it they're suffering with, because whatever they're suffering with makes it an urgent problem because it's messing up their life. It's, it's, you know, they're not living in the abundant fully satisfying life that they desire and that's painful you mm -hmm. know the fear like you also help people overcome fear um i hired a, a mindset coach to help me overcome fear you know three years ago two years ago when it was time for me to start getting visible i had my brand i had this done i had my program now i had just have to get out there and get visible in front of people. And I was absolutely terrified. So Sue, I know the pain that you feel, trust me, <laughs> trust me. I, I had such bad anxiety about it. Like I get anxiety when I get anxiety, I can't eat. My stomach hurts. I might, I get sweaty palms. I had all of that, you know, um, I wish Periscope, um, I still could access my videos because that, and then I could show you like my first video. Um, but I don't have it anymore. I was terrified. I was so, so terrified, but some things that have helped me, which I've taught you ladies, 
you know, is really knowing the problem that I solved. I always go back to that because that reminds me of what I'm an expert in, what I know about. And um, it makes me more comfortable to say, okay, this is my zone of genius. Even if it's the same thing that you're talking about, like back then, all I talked about was branding and visibility. I didn't talk about webinars or marketing strategy because I couldn't figure out the one that was going to work. So I didn't talk about that. Even though I was an expert marketer and I've been doing marketing for years, help for other companies, I couldn't figure it out for myself yet. But I didn't mm-hmm. talk about that. I didn't sell that because it was inauthentic to me. I talked about branding and I talked about visibility because those things I, I had mastered. So, so like it evolved. First was only branding. Then it was branding and visibility once I mastered that. Then I added on a few other things. And now, you know, I just love my program because it's, it's, it's so comprehensive. But you start where you're comfortable. And that's where your content should be really focused on. Start on what you're comfortable. Start on what you can own as an expert. Because then going live, doing webinars, all of that will come off A, authentic. B, as an authority, because you're like, I know what I'm talking about, you know, and and C, you'll truly be able to help transform people's lives that way. Um, Where where was I? I think, I think it was, I think it was in one of my coaching sessions with one of my clients. I was talking about, um, what was I talking about? It just seems so relevant right now, and it just went out my head. Something about authority. Um, oh, I can't remember what I was going to say. But basically, you know, just really being comfortable with with your with your expertise level, and not being shy to share it because people need it. People need it and you're doing them a service by getting visible and sharing your gift with the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. um, I can't remember what else I was going to (laughs) say. So any final questions before we wrap up? Because I actually have to jump off exactly at three. We have four minutes. Just a comment, not so much a question. Okay. But one thing I've learned from our time together is that, you know, I solve a specific problem and give them solutions for, you know, being calm and peaceful in their life. Mm-hmm. But they might not know that's what they really need. So, you know, with visibility, you have to kind of like, address what they think they need so that you can sell them what they really need. Right. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, like, what do you say? You tell them what they want, but you give them what they need. Um, like for example, everyone that comes to me wants a six figure business. They don't want to do a webinar. They don't want to do Facebook ads. They don't want to learn about funnels. They don't want to learn about email marketing or branding or building out a signature program or being forced to own their expertise and have that CEO mindset. You know, um, many times people have no idea what it takes to build a six figure business. They're clueless, completely clueless, but they know that's what they want. So that's what I talk about. How to have 10 K months you know, how, how to build a six figure business, you know? Um, and then I get into more details in different ways, but that's why everyone says, Oh, all business coaches talk about is, you know, 10 K in 10 minutes. And cause it works. That's why everyone does it. Cause it works, you know, um, talking about, how hard it is to build a business and how you have to have the grit to keep going. If that was your message all of the time, you wouldn't attract as many people because not everyone considers themselves as someone who has grit or that has, you know, the mental fortitude needed to really build a business. They need to be coached into that. 
not everyone comes to the game saying, I have the mental fortitude to do this. Most of the time, people are scared out of their brains and have zero confidence in their fortitude to build a business. You know, but it's just really interesting how much business and psychology are parallel. So any final words? We got a minute. Thank you for sharing that, Sue. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Natalie. I'm so glad you guys came to the clinic. Thank you. It's very helpful. Awesome. Awesome. I will be having another one um, in August also, which I will keep you all posted. Hopefully more ladies come. Um, so I'm glad this was beneficial to you and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye. All right. See ya. Bye.